Hey everyone, in this course we will be exploring the power of ChatGPT as a tool to use alongside Grasshopper for Rhino. So ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence language model designed to engage in conversational interactions and generate human-like responses based on the input it receives. So it's a really powerful tool that we can use to assist us in making our work for Grasshopper simpler and quicker, and there are a lot of ways we can actually make full use of it. It could be used to give step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up our workflows in Grasshopper, but it's actually at its most powerful when we use it to write code within the Grasshopper interface. So in this course, we're going to look at both, but we're going to have a larger focus on how we can use C Sharp to create complex growth algorithms with ChatGPT without really writing any hard code ourselves. We will be trying to create from nothing with singular prompts to ChatGPT. We're also going to try and offer it pseudocode that it can then translate into lines of actual code. And then we're going to iteratively improve on this code output with conversational guidance and hints. And at the end, we're going to try and leverage the power of object-oriented programming by asking ChatGPT to create blocks of code for us that will fit within an existing algorithm that we've already created. So to begin with, let's take a look at how ChatGPT can guide us with simple grasshopper tasks. If you haven't used ChatGPT before, it essentially works by asking conversational prompts and questions into the message bar at the bottom. ChatGPT will then attempt to answer our prompt as best it can, and whether this be through a description, a step-by-step -step instruction, or e even outputting code, it will depend on what we ask ChatGPT to do. In this tutorial, I'll actually be using the ChatGPT4 model, which is the paid version of ChatGPT. If you have this, I recommend using it, but if not, there's a free version available and you can use this as well. So before we begin, I just want to point out that ChatGPT often outputs slightly different messages each time. So the responses that you'll be seeing when you try this will probably be somewhat different to mine. What we're actually trying to examine here, though, is less about the specific output that ChatGPT is giving us and much more about the potential workflows that we can apply in Grasshopper. So I want to begin with something basic. I want to start with one of the first algorithms that you would ever learn if you were first experimenting with Grasshopper. I want ChatGPT to give us a step-by-step -step guide to create a simple attract point algorithm within Grasshopper. So let's give ChatGPT our first prompt. Okay, so I'm going to ask it, could you provide instructions on how to create a simple attractor point algorithm with a rectangular grid of circles in Grasshopper for Rhino? So let's hit return and see what it comes up with. Okay, cool. Let's um, have a first pass at trying to give us instructions. One thing I'm noticing in this instruction set is it's not giving us anything about where to include number sliders. So I'm actually going to add an extra prompt to get it to adjust its instructions for us and include this. Okay, great. So it's done updating those instructions. So let's give this a go on face value and see how accurate ChatGPT is with these instructions. So we're going to go to the vector tab and we're going to go to the grid and we're going to set rectangle. It's got that name wrong. It's actually rectangular, but I'll drop that onto the canvas. Then it wants two number sliders for the extents and then also for the cell count. So for the cell counts, I assume it means uh, these ones. And then for the extent, it actually means the sizes. So it's got those names a little bit wrong, uh, but we'll drop the number sliders as it's recommending. So it wants one that's 10 to 100, and that'll be in the size. And then it wants another one from 1 to 20. So um, I'm just going to make one that's 20, and we'll make it a 20 by 20 grid. Cool. So then in the next step, it's asking us to create a point for the attractor. So I'll create a point from the params tab this time. So we go to params, geometry, and select point. And I'll drop that on the canvas. I'm going to right click on the point and select set one point in the Rhino viewpoint. I'll just put it there. Next, we want to calculate the distance from each point to the grid of the attractor point. So it wants us to go to the vector tab 
uh, the point section and select the distance component. It wants us to connect the grid points from the rectangular component here and the attractor point to A and in B inputs respectively, like that. Next, it wants us to create circles at each grid point. So under the Curve tab, it would like us to go to Primitive and then down to Circle CNR. So we'll click on that guy there. And we're going to connect the grid points to the C output. So we've got all of our circles laid out there. Next, it wants us to remap the distances so that we get suitable radii for the circles. So it wants us to go to the Math tab. Then it wants us to go to Domain and then choose Remap Numbers. So I'll drop that into the canvas. So it wants us to connect these distances to the V input for remap numbers. Next, it would like us to input a component to the S using the bounds component. It doesn't tell me where to say where that can be found, so I'll just double click and type bounds and grab that. And that wants to go into S. Uh, it hasn't instructed me to grab the distance out here, so I'll go and do that anyway um, myself because I know that that needs to be done. So it hasn't quite got the instruction correct right there. And then for the target, it wants us to use the construct domain component. So it's not telling me exactly where that is either. So I'll go construct domain, and it's that one. It's not the squared one, and we'll put that into target. It wants these to be set at a range um, of 1 to 10. So let's go with a number slider of 1 for A, and then 10 for B. Then the last thing it wants us to do is to apply the remap distances as the radii for the circles. So basically it wants the remap values to be put into the R output. So that's pretty simple. We just take these remap values and plug them into R. And it's pretty good. Like there's a couple of missed instructions there, but it's pretty close to an attractor algorithm that you'd expect to create in Grasshopper. One thing that it's clearly not aware of is data trees. And I know that for me to get a true attractor here, I actually need to flatten this P output coming here. And then you get a proper radial attractor point because you're removing that data structure from the rectangular grid that we've got occurring. So this is currently a little imperfect, as we can see. And ChatGPT has given us OK instructions, but it's still not quite there. We have to do a lot of the manual work here. So there's a second workflow that I've been kind of toying with that can actually help speed up this process a little bit. We can actually give ChatGPT a prompt to give us the list of components required in order to create this algorithm. So let's type another prompt into here. Okay, so we're going to ask it to create a list in order of appearance of the component names that it's specified in these instructions. So the rectangular grid, the number slider, the remap numbers component. Let's see what it spits out. Okay, so it's still not getting that rectangular name correct, so let's update that. But what I want it to do is I want it to give me a list without any of these number formatting. So let's ask it another prompt. Okay, so it took a while to get there because it's trying to be way too fancy, but I finally got my flat list of names from ChatGPT. So let's try and recreate this whole thing. So I'm going to go and delete our old um, setup here. And what I'm going to use now is a custom component in Grasshopper called Component Generator. So this component's available to all premium members of the differentdesign.com. So if you're a member, log in and download it, and you can get um, going with it straight away. It's located in Parameters under Utilities. It's just here called Component Generator. And basically what we need to input into here is a button into the G input, which is the generate trigger. So I'll type in button. And then also a list um, of panels that's going to be a multi-line data list. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy this list over here. So control C, paste that into here. And literally at the click of a button, we're going to take that setup from ChatGPT and they're all going to appear on our canvas. And then that's really simple now. All we need to do is go through and start conjoining these guys um, together. And we can basically get to a pretty close, um, similar 
approach to what we just had in a matter of kind of seconds. So if I go and um, plug all these guys in to here, that one into there, and we just need these as our domains like that, and then the remaps into the radius, the points into C and R, or flatten coming out of here, um, we now have a nice attractor point algorithm that um, is created in literally a matter of seconds um, in this instance um, from our, you know, chat GPT prompts. So, you know, there's some longer term implications from this for this. Um, this is a real base prototype of what might actually be possible in the next couple of years with a conversational AI companion like ChatGPT. And I really hope that David Rutten and the team at, at McNeil are working to add features like this in the future, because you could imagine the power of this type of thing if you couple an AI conversational language model with Grasshopper solutions. The types of things that you could speed up and create in this process are enormous. So let's just have a quick look um, at a, maybe a more complex algorithm. So we'll give ChatGPT another crack um, at something a bit more complex than the attractor one. I actually think it did really well with that attractor one. But say, for example, we wanted to leverage this at something more, a little, a little bit more difficult. And I want to create a fractal tree algorithm in Grasshopper for Rhino. So this isn't super complex, but it certainly would test the limits of what ChatGPT kind of knows within the Grasshopper visual programming interface. So let's ask a prompt. So we're going to ask it, could you provide instructions on how to create a fractal tree algorithm in Grasshopper for Rhino? All right, so there's some pretty interesting instructions going on. I'm not sure what's going on down here with this uh, Grasshopper script Mathematica thing, but let's try following the instructions uh, themselves. So I'm just going to start over here. In fact, we might just delete all this stuff. Um, I am going to start with a single line segment. It wants me to create two points, so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. It doesn't need to give me super intense instructions to create those two points. I think it said it wants the first one at 0, and then the first one at 0, 1. So uh, something like that. And then we want to create a line component. So I'm going to type in line. We're going to go A to B, like so. So I've created our line there. Then we're going to define a function to create the branches. OK, so it's asking me to create a rotate component. So let's do that. We'll go rotate. And it wants me to rotate at the endpoints. So I'm going to go endpoints here. Uh, so the geometry we want to rotate is this line. The rotation plane is the end point, and it's asking to specify an angle. Um, I am going to just quickly put a radians component in because I know it's going to ask me for angled radians, and I'll just go 0 to, uh, you know, 360, so we get the full spectrum here. Um, and then we go like that, so maybe we have that as our first kind of line. And then it wants us to do the exact same for the other branch, but in the opposite direction. So I'll just go with a negative rotation like this. So we get that kind of branch. So it is starting to get a bit of that fractal tree uh, formation going on for us. Then it would like us to scale both of them. So let's go scale. I'm going to scale that geometry. Um, I'll make it a factor of 0 0.5 for now. And we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, we want it to be the endpoints as the center of scaling again. So I'll preview all this off so we can see where we're at. In fact, we want uh, that guy on so we can see that first line. Uh, I might make that 0.75 actually, 0.75. So next it's asking us to use the anemone plugin, which would make sense. We do want to loop this all as a big hit, but anemone is a little bit complex, so I'm not super confident in ChatGPT's ability to understand it, but let's give it a go with its instructions. So it wants us to create a loop start and a loop end component with Anemone. So I'm just going to type on the campus loop start and loop end, and we'll drop those onto the canvas there. So it wants basically for us to put this inside the loop. So loop start should take that initial line segment as an input. I'm actually going to override this so we only have one initial line segment. So we'll put that as our input into D. 
and the loop n should output the branches. So let's go and put, um, you know, two lines here coming together. I'm going to flatten them. And now it's not telling me to do that, but otherwise Anemone will crash if we do go and try and run this thing. And then to control the depth of the recursion, we can use the count input of the loop n component. So it's getting confused there. You can kind of see there is no count input of the loop n component. It actually comes out here. And what it is trying to tell us is to control this thing here. So I'm going to create something that's of two iterations now, but um, a slider up to 10 all the way up to there. And we'll go and input this in here and see how it goes. I don't have super high hopes for it. Um, what we then need to do is basically override um, all of this. Sorry, that goes into there. And then this goes into here. And you can kind of see it doesn't quite work. I'm going to go put a trigger on here because it's not really finding the right um, locations of the for the next point. To actually set this up properly, you would probably need to have an extra factor in here that would find the next endpoint of, end of those um, of those following up curves, but you can kind of see it doesn't quite get the instructions. So when you get to a slightly more complex algorithm with plugins involved, ChatGPT doesn't quite have the intuitiveness to do visual programming in Grasshopper. So we can ask ChatGPT to write c -sharp code that we can easily use in Grasshopper to create all kinds of interesting and complicated algorithms. It is helpful to have a bit of an understanding of the basics of writing c -sharp code in Grasshopper before getting started, so I highly recommend our c -sharp for Grasshopper beginner course on thedifferentdesign.com. What I want to do is I want to give ChatGPT another shot at writing a fractal tree algorithm, but this time in c -sharp. So it obviously couldn't quite get there with the visual programming directly in Grasshopper with its instructions previously. Um, I think it'll be able to do it in c -sharp. So let's start by giving it a prompt to do that. So I'm going to ask it, can you write a C sharp class, which basically specifies that I don't want a function uh, in this coding, um, using the Rhino Common API, which tells it the namespace I want it to ref reference and um, the types of functions I want it to use, to create a 2D fractal tree algorithm. It should be able to understand what that is. And I want it to use it in a Grasshopper C sharp scripting component, um, as opposed to using it in something like Visual Studio. So let's give that a go and see what it says. Okay, cool. So it's gone and um, created some code for us, and I'm going to try and quite blindly do this without trying to understand exactly what's going on in um, in this output. Um, I'm going to begin by creating a C# -sharp script component over here in Grasshopper, um, and to input code into this, basically you just need to double click on the C# -sharp icon there, and it'll open the scripting component. So just as a quick recap. Um, Below down here where it says custom additional code in this white space, that's where we write all of our functions and classes. And up here in the run script is where we would actually call and initialize those functions and classes and enable us to output data that we can then use inside of Grasshopper. So this is our class that it's um, created here, our fractal tree class. I'm literally just going to copy that and paste it in here. I'm going to press play on the script editor and there's no errors, which means hopefully the code's working or at least it, it's error free. I don't know if it's working yet. And then I'm going to go and copy uh, the run script area. If you don't get this run script area, you can prompt chat GPT to go and, um, you know, create this run script for you. Just say something like, could you create me an example of the run script um, code that I'll need to initialize this uh, fractal tree algorithm? So I'm going to paste that in here in the run tree, and I'm going to press play, and I'll probably get an error. Yep, I will. So what it's telling me is that I don't actually have any of these kind of um, names over here for these uh, these initialization uh, data types. So the starting point, the direction, and the depth of the tree itself. So basically, what I need to do is I need to come to my C# -sharp script. I'm just going to create an extra um, function here, and the x is going to be start. It's going to be a type int of 0.3D. Uh, the Y is going to be a direction with a type int of vector 3D. And the Z is going to be depth with a type hint of integer. And so I don't have any more errors anymore, which is really good. Um, so what I might do is I'll create a point container. 
and I'm going to go set one point, we'll put it at zero, and I'll put that in there. We can create a vector container as well. Um, I'm just going to put it just straight up like that for now. So we've got a line going, and then let's create a depth. So I'm going to go to 2 to start with, but we can go all the way up to 20, and that's going to tell us how many times it uh, creates this kind of fractalized iteration. So we go to top, it is it looks like it's working, which is really, really cool and amazing. And as we kind of like increase that depth, you see you get extra branches on your tree and you can create this kind of fractal formation from a typical fractal tree algorithm. So you kind of see how fast that was. That was insanely quick. I've literally done nothing but copy and paste the code from ChatGBT over into Grasshopper. And you can do this with so many different types of algorithms. And as we continue in this course, we'll look at a few different ways that you can continue this to get the most out of this feature. One last quick thing I want to touch on, because um, you might actually find your code doesn't work. If your code's not working, you can actually click the thumbs down um, icon here in ChatGPT and just go submit feedback and it'll actually provide you with a secondary answer and you could definitely go ahead and try and give that secondary answer a go as well but for me this one's actually working so I've actually kind of given it some bad advice here um, but definitely try that if your code isn't coming out as you'd kind of expect it.